human brain is a very impressive device. It's running on a very low power budget. It is able to learn. It doesn't need any software. And it is very robust against defects. And those are exactly the problems we have in modern computing. They are too expensive in power. They need software updates. And their chips are not very robust against faults. So if we could fix all these problems by introducing neuromorphic computing, it would be a big change in computing. That's a very interesting question. Cognitive computing describes the behavior of a computer. Uh, so a computer that shows cognitive behavior, for example, can make predictions based on previous experience. That's a typical sign of cognitive behavior. Now, cognitive computing can be implemented on any computer architecture. For example, if you look to the IBM Watson system, it's a very powerful supercomputer, conventional architecture, but it can work as a cognitive system. Neuromorphic computing tries to mimic the microscopic feature of brain circuits. That means it's not based on microprocessors, but it's based on physical models of neurons, synapses, and their connections. So it's the microscopic features that distinguish neuromorphic computing from cognitive computing. Well, of course, we want neuromorphic computing to do cognitive computing. And the application is to do what our brain does so well. That is to use very complex data and to make predictions based on that data and to interpret the data and to find causal relations. Like, for example, if I hold an apple and I let it fall, I can predict when it hits the ground. This is very difficult to do on a conventional computer if you do not put a physical model in before. The brain is able to learn. So to build systems that can learn, I believe, is the most exciting applications of cognitive computing. Well, Watson from IBM said the world only needs five computers. Bill Gates said nobody needs more than 640 kilobytes of memory. So predictions about computing are always wrong. Let me take the risk nevertheless. I think cognitive computing will not replace existing computing, but it will open up a completely new world of computing, which is the analysis of very, very complex data and to find causal relations in complex data to uh, guide our life, for example, and also to take business decisions.